there's, you know, at this point, we've gone through three of the status updates. So one of the things I want to talk about today is just what we're seeing with, uh, with status updates and, and links and things like that, um, just so that everybody's on, you know, I think this is an important meeting today because at the end of this meeting, you have no more free, you know, we only drop three status updates, so after this, they start counting, you know, if you've, if you've, if you've messed up. Um, and uh, we will still drop your three lowest. And, uh, and we are getting into the midpoint of the semester. We want to start getting some uh, uh, commits in, some, some uh, open source contributions. So I want to hit that a little bit today during this meeting. So if you are just logging into the, to the uh, recording or remotely and you're planning on putting this, you know, muted in the background until the end just so that you can get credit, don't do it. Not today. Um, because we are seeing some things come up. Uh, that I want to actually address um, and make sure that everybody's on the right on the right page. My goal is at some point in this class to give everybody an A. Okay, it has never happened, but it's not that hard, right? We just need you guys to be in there, um, uh, figuring out how to contribute and, and contributing. All right, so I am recording. Um, my goal was to do that without getting to this recording page, and I think I did today. Um, some interesting bits. There's only one. Oh, I meant to remove social. Um, unless, th does somebody want to talk about social today? Do we have anybody that we will be doing another social? We'll be doing another run today um, later on this semester, and we will get uh, more notes from them uh, after that run. Um, but we won't be. But there's, I guess, yeah. I'm going to just pull that slide out. All right. So the one thing that I did want to uh, that I did want to talk about today was all right. When you hit the share button instead of the uh, okay, that's what happens when you hit the share button instead of the present button. So the one fun thing, the one interesting tidbit for today uh, was I was talking to one of our, our friends at, at IBM, uh, Susan Maleka, and there is a intro to open source course. Now we offer an introduction to open source class here at RPI. I offered it in the spring. We'll probably offer it again uh, unless I have other teaching duties. We'll probably offer, offer it again next spring um, and maybe even next summer. Um, but the key is, is that you guys, if you're new to our coast and you're just taking our coast this summer, you may still be kind of wondering about, about some stuff in open source. You know, what is open source? What does it mean to be doing open source? So they have a cognitiveclass.ai course, uh, Introduction to Open Source. I looked at the authors of it. They're both IBM employees. Um, if you want to, to go through and take this course, I think it's a really good idea. It's, it says it's about four hours. Um, and I'm willing to treat this as, a, uh, as a, uh, a bonus session as well. So particularly if we get down to the end of the semester and you still are confused about what we're doing um, and you need a bonus session or two, uh, go in and, and, and take this and let me know. Again, the same thing, DM me on, on, uh, on Discord. Tell me that you took the course. Give me a couple of interesting facts. Um, and uh, I think this is, is pretty helpful. It should, it should get you guys over, you know, I would recommend not waiting till the end of the semester. Seriously, if you're gonna do it, do it now. It'll help you out um, and, uh, and it'll give you a little bit more basis. And then come back and take the, inter uh, in the open source software course in the spring and we'll build on this. Uh, and it's much longer than four hours uh, and it counts for credit. So, you know, please consider that. Calendar, you know, we are getting down to the end of the academic year. Um, you know, we've got about two weeks to the end of pass no credit. We have to designate pass no credit. And we're about five weeks from the end of the semester completely. So you know, we've got a lot to pack in in this next, in this next little bit. Um, and we will be packing it in just as fast as we can. We're here, right? We're a little past halfway now. We are marching down. Um, in about two weeks, we'll start doing presentations. I'll try to get a schedule out enough in advance that you guys know what you're doing. Uh, we do have 20 plus, um, 20 plus 
uh, projects this year. So 20 plus projects, if we do seven a day, right, this, this class ostensibly runs from 130 to 335. Uh, that is 125 minutes. If we do seven a class period, figure 15 minutes off the top, that's 110 minutes for seven classes. You know, what is that, about, about 15 minutes a class, 15 minutes a presentation, give or take? So that's kind of what we're looking at doing. I don't, wanna, I don't want this to run too much longer than three classes. Maybe we'll make it four. Um, but that's, that's kind, of what we're, kind of what we're looking at. Um, and you, know, you, should be, you should be prepared to give a, give a nice little talk. Demos are always appreciated. As I've mentioned, every year and never got taken up on extra points for song and dance. I'm a big fan of song and dance. Um, Anybody, anybody interested? We had ballroom dancers in here one year, and they didn't take me up on it either. And there were multiples. They could have just, they could have done a routine. Um, anyway, we're, we're coming down to the end on the, uh, on the uh, workshops that we have scheduled. Um, I am willing to schedule more. It doesn't take any time at all for me to schedule as many of these as we'd like. Um, Alice gave a, a very well-received one on Resume 101. Um, last Tuesday, a uh, couple of days ago. Um, so, you know, please check out, I guess there was a problem with the recording. Yeah. Problem with the recording, but she does have notes there, so please check it out. She actually went and interviewed or talked to uh, the, the, uh, the uh, I always want to say CCCP, but it's not CCCP, that would be the Russian CCPD. Okay, one less C and a D at the end. Um, to get some good pointers, you know, your resume, is part of as part of how you present yourself. As are your Git contributions, by the way. Um, that's one of the great things about Git is it's open and everything you do that you want to be seen can be seen. You know, hide hide the hide the nasty stuff you did it in uh, in high school. Um, keep the great stuff you did in high school, and show the stuff you did at Arcos. Um, Bill Nye, 721. That's a week from little a little under a week five uh, five days from today. Um, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, is going to do vanilla JS like a boss. Um, so you know, consider taking that one. Um, you know, all of these JavaScript frameworks are, are really important, and you'll see that almost every project we do that has a web component, almost every project we do has a web component, and almost all the web components use uh, JavaScript. Although not, I guess it's a, probably not all of them. Um, so that's a really good. Good thing just to, to, to learn and, uh, and be ready, be able to uh, work in. Today, we don't have too much today. The first thing you need to know is that status updates are due. Um, right, every Friday you need to do status updates, except for last Friday when we were on break and I didn't want to hear about all your firework uh, experiences. Um, so status updates are due today. Um, please get those in. We have graded all three of your previous submissions. So before you turn this one in, or as you're turning this one in, right, it's due on Monday at 11.59, 59 p.m. or Sunday. I don't know. We'll check it out in a second. Um, as you're making this one due, as you're preparing this one, go back and review the ones we've already given you. Because it may be that you've been doing it all wrong and you should need to, uh, you need to change something. Probably not all wrong. I think that's, wow. I think that would be a, uh, a misnomer. But that is 4, 7, 16, right? And it is due on seven nineteen. So seven nineteen is, in fact, Monday at 11.59.59 p.m. Okay, get it in before then. You can use up to two late days. Um, you know, please make sure that you're getting those in. They don't count a lot. Cumulative, you know, each individual one doesn't count a lot towards your grade, but they do count towards your grade. And it does actually help us. Uh, if you read through, I made a comments. I, I reviewed every one of them uh, after the, after the, I gave your mentors first crack at them. And then I went through and, and uh, see if I agreed or disagreed and, and actually left some comments on them. So please take the time to read the comments. Um, you know, they will help you. I'm seeing some common mistakes still. You know, the most common mistake is probably not filling in all the sections. A lot of people are leaving off blockers. 
Not having blockers is great. Not having a blocker section is going to lose you some points. We, we want to know that you've considered it, right? Think about where you are. Uh, the other part of that is, you know, I had a lot of tests this week. That's not really a blocker. It's not a technical blocker, right? That's not something where I can jump in and help you with. What we want to know on the blockers are things that um, are persistent, problems you haven't, you know, if you, if you just ran into something as you're running into class, that's not a blocker yet, right? That's, I'm working on something and I don't know how to do it yet, right? If you spend two days on it or, you know, seven hours on it and you still don't know where to go, then it becomes a blocker, right? Now it's stopping you from making progress. It's not part of your making progress. It's something that's in your way. So what we're looking for in this section is um, important, and by the way, it should look something like this example status update. What we're looking for in the blocker section is um, things that are keeping you from making progress that you can't resolve yourself in a short amount of time that are technical, th you know, things that we can actually um, do it. I think we've had uh, at least one concussion this, this semester. I don't like to hear about it. I do want to know about it, but I can't do anything about that. I can't fix it. Uh, we've had a few people get very sick and, and have to be out for a couple of days. Again, please let us know, but, you know, that's not a technical blocker because we can't help you. Um, so, you know, the blocker is, is mainly a way to, to, to reach out for, for additional help. The other thing, and I'm going to talk about this in a little more detail, is citing non-contribution websites in the link section. So what does this mean? Right? You go out and you take a tutorial, and then you give me a link to the tutorial in your, in your status updates. Right? That's not, there are ways to use that. Right? There are ways to incorporate that into your submissions but they're not your work, so you can't cite them as your work, right? If you created the tutorial, that's something else, right? If you created the tutorial and it's public and it's under a C, C by CC or something, you know, that, that's awesome. But if you're doing somebody else's tutorial, for example, that's not actually an open source contribution. That's a learning activity that you have to engage in to get to the point where you can make contributions, but it's not a contribution in and of itself. That doesn't mean it's not useful and it doesn't mean we can't figure out how to make it useful to somebody else. We're going to talk about that just a little bit today. Um, the other thing is, is sometimes you, get, you send me to a web page. Um, you know, if you have a web page for your site, I love to see it. Um, but again, I can't tease out from the source code of the web page who did what contributions. You know, if you're, if you're creating a website, keep the website in a, in a repository and put me to your, to your links there. Um, and when you cite uh, your links, don't just send me to the root of a GitHub page, right? Send me directly to the commits because um, I want to just click on them and, and go through really fast. There are, I think we're down to 63 of you taking it for credit right now. So we're down from the 170 we normally have during the spring and fall semester. And we're down a little bit from the 70 we started out here. But that's still a lot of, a lot of uh, things to review. So the easier you make it, um, the happier I am. And the happier I am, the higher the grades are. Um, all right, so let's talk about, and by the way, again, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is the same one I gave a few weeks ago, I think, in, uh, in uh, meeting seven, um, right? What you did, use a paragraph, give me some details. What you're going to do, can be a shorter paragraph, but give me some details. Blockers, technical blockers that we can help you with, you know, things where if we were to step in and take them away, you would make outstanding progress going forward. And then specific links to... Uh, to uh, commits or uh, commits or issues, right? Just different things that we have that we can that we can physically see that has your name on it, um, and that has something there that can actually be evaluated. All right. So. This is just a reminder, we're three weeks in, and again, I'm starting to see a little bit of slop in, in the status updates. Um, you know, these are the things we want you to hit. It's really formulaic, right? There, there's no, it's one, two, three, you know, one, two, next week, three, blockers, four, links, five. Not complicated. You guys are engineers or are going to be or scientists, or business leaders, right? 
not complicated. All right, so I, I said that some of you are doing are still in the learning phase, and the learning phase is great. Um, if you are, if your project is fortunate enough to have a con uh, contributions guidelines or getting started guides, a lot of this stuff fits right into there. If you are on a project and there's a contribution guideline or a, a getting started guide, and you follow the getting started guide, and it doesn't get you to a starting position, then the guide needs to be fixed, right? And that's important because that means that you and everybody after you can't follow the directions to get started, right? That's a big stopping point. The whole process of getting people started is called onboarding. And what you find is that when you're getting people to join your project, any project, but open source in, in particular where a lot of the work is volunteer work, the number of people you get through the door Right? You start out with a number of people who aren't in, who, just a general population of people who have exposure to your idea. You end up with a much smaller percentage of people who are actually are interested enough to get engaged. And then they start going through this onboarding process to get engaged. And if the onboarding process, right, how many of those that are interested actually make it into the contribution stage is highly gated by how nasty your onboarding process is. If the community is friendly and the onboarding process is easy, people come. If the community isn't friendly or not prestigious uh, or your onboarding is, is just it takes a month to get a, a working system up, then people lose interest, right? You have to, you want your onboarding process to be easy. So fixing the onboarding process, that's the very first thing. If you are having problems, fixing that process is the first step towards getting people on your project, and it is a very important open source contribution. So if you are doing that, please feel free. Most projects, you know, please feel free to make commits that fix that documentation. Most projects will accept those gladly. Uh, the ones that won't, just commit it to your own fork of the project and push it to your own repository because it will be useful. And maybe make an, you know, Maybe in your pull request, put a link to your repository so that people, if they fail to pull in the pull request, people can get it from you themselves. All right. Um, so now I want to take a look at something else. Let's say we are contributing to an external project. We are in the learning phase. The project maybe has technologies that we're not aware of. You know, maybe you have to learn CMake and continuous integration and a whole bunch of other things in order, in order to be able to actually begin to contribute. And the people on the project aren't interested in, a, in having that in their getting started guide or in their contributions guidelines or anything like that. So you're kind of working on your own. So let's talk about what you do in that situation. right? You shouldn't just sit back and say, OK, I'm going to blow six or eight weeks of the semester not getting credit for all the hard learning I'm doing. right? That's not a good plan. And it makes those last couple of weeks really rough trying to get in enough contributions so that I can actually see what you've been doing. Because that's what, that's what we have, that's part of what we have to have, is I need to be able to see what you're doing, right? So let's talk a little bit about, about what I would do in that situation. And there are multiple ways to do this. I am happy to talk to you about your specific situation. But let's say I want to go in and, uh, come on, open up the tutorial. There we go. And I want to run through uh, I, I used to work on something called ITK, the Insight Toolkit for Registration and Segmentation. You may have that backwards. It could be segmentation and, re segmentation and registration. And now it's and advanced image analysis. They have a tutorial. They have a number of tutorials. This one was given at Mackay, and it's online. And you can run through this to see how to get ITK set up and working. So if you were working on a project that was doing image segmentation, think separating uh, uh, cancerous lesions from normal tissue. That's a segmentation uh, problem. Uh, registration would be taking an MRI of a person and a CT of a person and making the two images line up so that you got the benefits of both modalities uh, localized appropriately. Okay? And let's say you were doing a project that needed something like that, and part of what you did to learn was you went through this simple ITK tutorial, which is a simplified in interface. Simple ITK doesn't mean it's simple. It means this is a simple inter simplified interface to ITK that gives you much of the power of ITK from something like a Jupyter Notebook or a Python bindings. And you could run through this tutorial, and that would be a great learning exercise. The problem is, at the end of this tutorial, you haven't contributed anything. 
you've taken somebody else's contributions and they've allowed you to get good at something, which is great. We want you guys learning. But let's talk about how you turn that into a contribution of your own. You're working on a project that uses Simple ITK, and the people on the project who started it already knew about Simple ITK. They have no interests in tutorials. You needed the tutorial to get started. In fact, they probably pointed at you at the, at the tutorial. So what you can do is let's start out with a project called, we'll start out with my, uh, with my famous garbage project that I have on GitHub just for this kind of thing, right? I've got a little project called Unknown UNK. Um, it's essentially a non-project. It just, I use it to illustrate different things. But let's say I have project or somebody else has project unknown. It's the project that uses ITK, um, simple ITK. And I want to figure out how I can get credit for seeing this tutorial. Well, if the tutorial isn't called out any place on the site, right, if it is, then we've got to uh, manipulate a little bit more. Maybe we have to add to it, add to the description, talk a little bit more about what it does, uh, maybe give a personal review on it or something. But let's say that they, they just, it's not there, they're not interested. Um, you go out, you fork the repository, right? You create a fork. I'm not gonna fork it because I already own it. You clone the fork. That'll bring you to something that looks like this in a second. Right, here's my fork of the repository. Here's my clone of my, of my own fork, right? I've got it on my machine, right? I can create a branch. You always wanna work in a branch, right? Particularly when you're doing something that may not make it into main because by doing a branch, then you're in a situation um, where you can go back to main and not have any of your commits interfering with what's actually going on uh, in the main branch, but at the same time, all of your work is still there. And you can merge back and forth across branches, so that's not really a problem. So let's, what did I say I was going to call that? I said I was going to call it onboarding. So you can create a new branch onboarding, and we're going to use this new branch just to put in information that I have learned that I didn't know that will help the next person along come up to speed faster on the unknown project. So I'm just going to do Vim um, and I'm going to call it annotated bibliography and I'll call it an MD file although I don't know that I'm going to do any real MD stuff, um, I'll put a little pound sign in there and say annotated bibliography of useful links and tutorials. And then maybe I'll do something like Paste, ah, shoot, you are not going to let me paste, are you? <sighs> SimpleITK.org slash tutorial all in caps. How many think that I'm going to get this right? All right, so now we have the link in there, and now I can do, do something like a very good starting point for learning and if I can pull out objectives
who it's for, um, date reviewed, short synopsis, Right, short synopsis. What does it do? What's the starting point? Give me some. Give me some information here. Right. This is you know. Enrich it. Make it so that the next person through can glance down through your annotated bibliography, and then maybe we have another, uh, another link. And more information. Right. Make it useful. Right? This is a useful bibliography that somebody going through, if this doesn't exist on the site, this is something that could actually help. Right? Save it away. This is not going to work, but it will give me the command that will work, which was always. Right, and at this point now we can go into our unknown Repository, should be able to refresh this, and we can see our onboarding branch, and we can see our annotated bibliography here. I might actually create a, a documents directory and put the annotated bibliography and any other things I was going to put in there, um, but, but this, you know, this is good enough for what I'm trying to show you. Um, here's the link to the simple ITK tutorial, right? Here's the information that you learned about, learned from it, that you want somebody else who's starting on this project to know, um, and any other links that we have down there. And now you can actually go in and on this page, actually see the contributions. Uh, you know what? I, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you guys got to tell me when I don't switch over. Okay, so, you know, we can actually go to the repository. We can pull down and select our onboarding branch, right? We can see our annotated bibliography file and view it. Um, and we can actually even go in and see the commit that generated it, right? And this commit this commit, not, not the ITK, come on, not the ITK uh, tutorial, but this commit, come on, control C, there we go, can actually go into my, uh, my status update. I don't know why I control C'd that because I can't actually get there, but, um, but that, that link here, right, this commit link, um, is actually what I would put in my in my uh, in my status update. All right. So, any questions on that? Does that make sense to everyone? This isn't what I'm seeing in a lot of the status updates, right? What I'm seeing in a lot of the status updates is you would put in the simple ITK link, the simple ITK tutorial link, not you know you would put in this link and not the link to your commit that uses it. All right. So. Anyway, that, that's what I want you guys to be thinking about. Um, that's really what we're looking for here. And in the next week when we ask you for a list of your contributions, this is not going to be very useful, right? This one is. Okay, so just keep that in mind. 
That's, that's, really, what, that's really what these links need to be. If you have a bunch of these, uh, especially a, long, a bunch of these with a lot of writing, you're going to do well. Right? And you can do this while you're still in a learning mode, before you've made any substantial code contribution to the project. And in fact, this may be more useful because your code contributions represent the efforts of one person. But if you get everybody who joins the project uh, up ahead and working and contributing one month earlier, right, you gain a year for every 12 people you get, you get on the project. Okay, so these are important contributions. They're not just make time. Um, but you have to figure out how to do this. Now, coming back here, right, we've done this. Develop in your fork of the repository, right? Use a branch to keep this separate from other code. Make it useful, right? If there's more that I can put in that would make this more useful to somebody coming on board, do it, right? If I'm putting in garbage that's not going to help anybody, so be it. Take that out. And then four, offer it back to the main project via a pull request. Right? Once you've made these types of things, see if they're willing to engage and find out what format they want it in. Maybe they want it in a different directory. Maybe they want it in Markdown. Maybe they want it in PDF. Find out. But if they don't accept it, that's still okay. You did the work. You made the contribution. By putting it in your own private fork, you've made it public and open source. Right? So you've satisfied everything you need for this course just by doing that, whether or not your PR request is, is approved. Make sense? Any questions? I feel like I say this one a lot. Um, that's why I'm warning you guys. If you just skipped over this part, go back about 10 minutes, reread it. Um, OK, next few weeks, we're in commit mode, right? Until, until we start presentation mode, um, we are in full steam ahead commit mode. You should be meeting in your small groups at least twice a week. You should be generating contributions. This is your major task for the semester. If you're having problems with it, talk to somebody. The mentors have been through this multiple times. The coordinators have been through it probably a few more times. I've been through it since 2016 when I joined RPI. Um, so you know, come and talk to us. We can get you through this part, but you do need to reach out if you're having problems. Rainbow grades, so with that in mind, rainbow grades are up to date. The status updates are up to date. I don't think I have anything outstanding for you guys that I need to do on the, on the grading front. So correct any mistakes. Let me know if there's any mistakes, um, particularly on, on status updates or on, uh, or on, on, uh, on uh, workshops. Um, in the next week or so, we will begin giving you the opportunity to be evaluated. So you have to have something in order to be evaluated. So please start committing. Commit early and often and, and see us if you need help. Like I said, on Tuesday, we're going to open up the mid-year grading review gradable. This is an optional review. Okay, You don't have to do it. Um, but if you submit before midnight at Friday, we'll do an informal status check for you and say, yeah, it looks like you're, looks like you're on pace. Looks like you need to have more contributions or longer contributions, more significant contributions. Uh, or, you know, however we feel you kind of fit on that spectrum. It's not a grade. Um, it's just, you know, this is, if you were to submit now, if, if the semester were to end now after seven weeks, this is where we see you kind of fitting in. Um, and it'll allow you to avoid surprises and know if you have to kick it into gear. Um, I'm never going to tell you you can coast, just so you know. Um, all right. Last summer, I did this using peer review. Uh, as well as the, the mentors and, and coordinators. I haven't decided whether we're going to try that or not. It's kind of a pain to set up, but it was kind of fun. So I'm still kind of reviewing that. We'll talk about it uh, with, the, with the mentors on, uh, on Monday and, and make a decision. All right, that's all I had. Any questions? By the way, a lot of the stuff that, we, that we've been keeping, that we've been giving you guys is down below. I think I have it, have it on skip still. Um, so, you know, if you, if, you lose, if you lose your place and you, and you can't figure out where you are, um, there are a lot of slides after the main slides that you guys, that I'm kind of keeping around um, in case people have questions or they forget something and they're trying to figure out what class it was in. Oftentimes, you can look at the end of the material and see, find the answer to the question you're looking for. Um, but we don't need to go over those all the time. 
If you go to this link, you are now ready to take contributions. And uh, let me, or yeah, this, this is the venue link for, for uh, attendance. And let me pull up venue. Let me pull up the, uh, the beautiful QR code that we have. I wish there were a way to advance so that I could go from course 13 to course 14 without going back to the main menu. All right, so there's, dang it. Okay, so there's the, uh, this is the QR code to get you to venue, the little one. Come on back, there we go. The little one is a QR code to get you to venue, and then the bigger one is the QR code for attendance. If any questions, the chat has been completely muted today. I expect that, that means Yash is probably absent. No, you're there. You let me down, man. All right. I'm going to stop the recording now, and, uh, and uh, I'll hold office hours. By the way, I need to leave office hours just a little early today. Um, so about quarter after 3, instead of, uh, instead of 3.30, I'll be leaving. I need to meet somebody at the union uh, to discuss...